Peace, fam. Yo, Greg Kuumba. Make sure you watch the show. I mean, I've been summoned. I got to go. I got to go. So I'm in a hurry. Peace. Oh, by the way, Mr. Cleveland Brown, my cameraman and business partner, want to say great Kumba to y'all. Have a great Kumba. See you later. Watch the show. can't see the label pretty good uh, there you go there you go that's better that's the half gallon and here's the gallon all right I wanted to take you through the process but I found out that I have to travel this morning and I'm about to get ready it's kind of the last minute so we're gonna do this toast and I'm gonna combine everything so of course no workout we got to clean up the kitchen though um, and I'll breathe and all that stuff later. But and hopefully I'm gonna have some good interviews to bring to you um in the next couple of days. Alright, so we're gonna toast and I wanna say great kumba to you. Alright? So here we go. Alright, uh, let me move. This right here, because it's darker if you can look at it, if you can see it, this is ginseng. Alright, so what I'm offering for the next couple of weeks is just the ginseng. In the regular right now, all right. So I'm gonna put the ginseng. This one right here is a gift. I'm gonna go and get this one to Elder. I gotta gotta track them down and pass that on to him. So we are gonna toast out of the uh, gallon here. All right. So let's do it. Woo! Oh man! All right. So of course you know we gotta start with some water. Got the Giammi coffee cup. So I can travel. You know, I like to travel with my cup. There we go. Alright. So first, of course, we're gonna start with some water. Got some Fiji. Just planning a toast special with y'all this morning. You know, on Saturdays I move a little bit later, especially after three days straight of being busy. So we're gonna try to get at least 16 ounces. The Fiji water is bomb. Alright, so uh, drink your water. Mm. Ah. Very soft. Very soft. Mm. 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 Stay hydrated, my friends. Stay hydrated. Mm. All the health stuff you do will be brought to nil if you do not stay hydrated. Your body is 70% water. 
and you're not putting pure water in, water, I'm not talking about juice or nothing else because your body got to, in a sense, process all that stuff. It got to extract the liquid out. It got to extract the water out from everything else. So why not make it easy on your body and just get that straight water with that powerful or ashe in it? Mm. 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 Wow. I'm sorry. I'm getting another glass of that. Ooh. My body is dancing. I, I need to. I need to get a water sponsor. Let me get that up off that picture. Man. Pure water. <clears throat> oh my God. Excuse me. Back on that warrior, warrior diet, right? Even though I'm traveling, so I'm going to hold off. I know people going to be eating around me and stuff, so I got to hold off until about 5 o'clock. So when you got it, so that you don't have to, those of you that's going to start getting the gallons, right? You can shake it up, but you don't necessarily want to totally shake it up. But you want to get it active. You want to get it moving. You, you want it. Oh, y'all see the new labels I got, right? I'm not, ooh, I don't like getting it wet, but I got it wet. With the new labels so imagine this on the little bottles but i'm gonna move away from the bottles in a minute because i just want to get people who really you know the the small bottles is more i mean well actually for the taste the small bottles turn this out um but the big bottles you keep the pressure up you can have it um carbonated but this is not carbonated this just i just pulled this out and i wanted y'all to see it but I was in a hurry and I wasn't able to um, do it. So on the next process, I'll walk y'all through that and let y'all meet a couple of my scobies, okay? So first we toast to the creator of the universe, to the creator of all that we know, the energy that permeates everything. And we want to partake in that energy. So we say thank you. And we toast and we say I shake. And then we move to our personal ancestors. And the ancestor that was on my heart heavy this morning was Brother Nomo X. And I'm, I'm going to tell a story about Nomo X, but we're going to finish the toast. Um, because what we're going to talk about is creating space. Creating sacred space, right? Since we're on Kaumba, right? So we're going to toast and we say, Ashe. Hmm. Too soon, but good grief. We're going to toast our ancestors. Um, we toast um, our personal ancestors and they heavy on my heart. I send shots out to Brother Normal X. Next, we move to the present moment, which is Kumba. We toast and we say, Ashe. From there, we move to our children, our children's children, until infinity. We toast them so that they will one day be able to toast us. We build today so that they will have a place to toast us. So if we don't get busy and build the space today, they won't have a space. You understand? So we need to go on and we toast them now and we work for them now. We say, I say, I say, I say. And as we say in Jiami, 100 years. Mmm. Not using my young Scobies on this one. Mmm. Very, very good. Very good. Ladies, y'all did a good job. Yeah, I refer to my scobies as she's. Ladies, yeah. My ladies work for me well. Mm. Mm. I think I can. I'm looking forward to bottling some of this up. I want to see how it's going to do. I got some of them airing out. I got an aerator on top of them. So, um, they, these bottles will be ready possibly by tomorrow. So... I'll be making some calls because people been calling me about them. So we go. Mm. So now 
to the story. Because we're going to do the lesson now. Kumba. Um, Brother Nomo X, for those that don't know, Brother Nomo X was a uh, uh, historian, a warrior, a community servant. One of my mentors, I'm proud to say that um, he, he took me up under his wing. Um, he used to call me Peanut. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I got a grown man calling me Peanut. I ain't never been calling me Peanut. You know what I'm saying? But he was an elder, and he had put in work. And he was a member of uh, a black nationalist organization called Afrosat. Now, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't know that uh, during the 60s and the 70s, especially uh, late middle 60s, Middle between the middle 60s and mid, middle 70s, there was a lot of black nationalist organizations. Black Panther was the most popular one, but no one belonged to a group that was founded in Cleveland, Ohio. And, um, and he went up to Cleveland and worked with them and then came back to Columbus and brought the Afro set to Columbus. Um, um, so there are other black national organizations out there outside of the Black Panther that did a lot of good work. And Nomo was one of those, Nomo's, Nomo belonged to one of those organizations and it's called the Afroset. Um, look it up, do your research, all right? So now, Nomo did this thing for years called the, the Food Co-op. And he would often um, call the young warriors to come and participate in the um, food co-op so sometimes he would call me at four o'clock in the morning I have to get my ass up and, and go work see and that's the power of, of an elder right he ain't got to make you do nothing he just makes a work make makes make a request you see what I'm saying because his work and the work ethic that he has shown to the people and he has shown to you will make him respond to you so if a man that was in his 50s could get up and call somebody in his 20s to come then why not? If he could do it, I could do it. So, no more would call and I would go. So, um, as time went on, you know what I'm saying, he would always pull me back in. And even when I didn't, wasn't helping, um, I would try to get a box, right? And basically what it was, was a fruit and vegetable box. And for years, um, um, the, the organization that he was one of the founding members of here in Columbus called um, the African Center for Study and Worship um, uh, basically supported themselves with a food co-op. So they provided the community with fresh fruits and vegetables on a bi-weekly basis. And for years, Nomo did this all the way up until he passed away. He was doing this thing. And um, so every now and then when he had extra boxes and he hadn't heard from me, he would call me to come get a box. I'm like, I ain't got no money. He said, come get the box. Pay me when you get the money. And you better give me my money. <laughs> I mean, the audacity of this elder man. I love Nomo, man. Nomo, look. Nomo would, Nomo would force a loan on you, right? I mean, it was a beautiful thing, you know. But, you know, it was, it was to a good cause. So I would get the money and get it to him. So when I started doing uh, intensive foster care, you know, and um, I remember when I would get my boys up and, and work out with them, you know, and, and then I would sometimes take them to the food co-op. So it was a while I hadn't showed up. I hadn't bought a box. So no one decided to stop by my house. So he walked in my house and I have to under, I have to explain this to you. At this point in time, it was an all male house. This was the Giami house. This was the first Giami house. Right. I had power. For those that don't know, power was my pit bull and child mix. I had Miss Mayotte, which was a, a, a mean old alley cat. I had boys, uh, all African-American that nobody else could deal with. And when they had a child like that, they would call me. Right. And I, so I had bloods in my house. I had crips in my house. And at that time, folks in my house. And I had the neighborhood kids coming to the house. So the house will always be busy. And I always prided myself on being able to do, as I call, feed the nation. At that time, I wasn't on, 
I did I didn't understand the whole importance of starting with the tribe piece. So <clears throat> Nomo came over my house and I was like honored, right? He just popped up. Like, no, I'm like, wow, no more. All right, y'all, boom. I'm introducing him to the boys, and he seeing someone with rags. I'm like, yo, put that shit up. You know what I'm saying? I'm gone with that. Blah, blah, blah. So he look around, and then he sat down, and he saw my dog walk up. My dog, I patted my dog. He sat down, and then my alley cat, Miss Maya, came out. So Power laid down, and then Miss Maya laid up on top of Power, right? So Nomo looked at that shit, and then he looked around, and he saw the Bloods, Crips, and folks sitting around in my crib, and there's peace. And he looked at me and said, brother, what type of witchcraft you got going on here? And I started laughing. I said, what is you talking about? He said, well, I mean, you got dogs and cats laying together. You got Crips and Bloods and folks sitting up in here, and nobody fighting. I said, no. I said, Elder, man, I'm just, you know, I'm just doing what... What you taught me? This Giame, dog. You know, we roll up on the Giame. So all that shit pales in, comp in comparison to what um, Giame stands for. You know? And I'm, I'm bringing that up, one, to let you know that I have a connection with elders. And I have a, a respect for elders. As a matter of fact, um, hopefully sometime soon I'll be able to salute one of my elders who is a major influence in my life. And when I go to see this elder... I will be wearing pants that were passed down to me from my grandfather. I will be wearing shoes that was passed down to me from another elder who is still alive right now. And um, he just told me that I was worthy of his shoes, right? Um, and I'm going to go greet this, this elder who was a major factor in my life wearing remnants of an uh, ancestor and another elder that I have great respect for. To go greet another elder. Right? You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, showing you the connection. But the piece that I want to stress to all of y'all on this day of Kaumba is that it's important that we create spaces. Spaces of safety. We create, we create our spaces where individuals understand there's a higher thing, a higher idea there. So that you can have young men from one group and young men from another group and even animals recognize that when they are in that space, hmm, your culture rules. The culture of that place, the spirit of that place rules. So there is no crip and there is no blood and there is no folk. There is no vice lord. There is no cat. There is no dog. You know, at that point in time, I think I might even had a white boy up in the house. And Noma was like, what? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you got all this going on here, and there ain't no fight. And they all walked up to him and greeted him. They all showed him proper respect. And these was young people that people thought was basically throwing them up to the side. And like, dang, we're going to let them stay over at Brother Hot Tim's until they go to jail. You know what I'm saying? And I have only had. I can remember one kid leaving my house to go to jail. Now, some went to jail after they stayed out of my house for a little while. But while they was in my house, none of them went to jail. You know what I'm saying? I had one who went out and did something super stupid, right, that went to jail from my house that I can remember. I'm quite sure some people can remember some other ones, but I only remember one, you know. But the point I'm trying to make is we have to use our creativity to create spaces where our reality rules your reality rules that's a nation building imperative that's a tribe building imperative there has to be a place where people of differences within your culture can come together and understand that something bigger is happening I just got a text um, my elder and my brothers are on the way I'm about to roll out, so this will be it. I'm going to go in the kitchen and, and, and watch this just real quick, but I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for staying with me. Those of you that want to support the journey and trade on some of this uh, ambrosia, be sure to get with me, all right? Hopefully, I'll be able to send it out nationally right now, but right now, I'm just stuck locally, right? So, I want to build up 
um, the thing here, and then eventually I'll be able to get to the Chicago's, the uh, Atlanta's, the New York's, um, the Atlanta's, because those are all the places where I'm getting inquiries from. But I thank y'all for taking the time to check this out, and if you want to stay around and watch me do my um, my my cleaning routine, you can. All right, peace. You are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. This is a Heart of a Symbol production. Where we strive to blow up your old paradigms. the video I want you to subscribe click the bird right there the fiery bird and I also have a special video just for you right there and for those that want more information about Jamie journey go to our site it should be right about there